So good morning, good evening to everybody around the world. So lovely to speak with you. I actually sort of came across spirit photography by accident. I, um, as a child, I used to see things in my room. And then um, I did a TV show called Scream Test and they actually got us to take photographs of spirit and they said they didn't get anything, but I saw lots of different things happening. So that sort of set me on my quest. But I put together a little presentation to show you um, some of my photos. I have thousands and thousands and I was having trouble trying to fit everything in. So I'm just going to share the screen with you. This image to the left here is one of my very early spirit photos and it was very exciting. I got a, um, I'll talk about it a little bit more, but see there's Sir Arthur Conan Doyle there in the right hand side. And if you can look um, around where I've sort of got my mouse, I actually went to an exhibition called Stranger Than Truth. And before I went, I had a vision and he, he came to me and said, if I went to the exhibition, he'd show up on the camera. And uh, there, this is what happened. But I'll show you the photos pre um, sort of um, that are coming before that. So first of all, so I should, I sort of jumped ahead of myself. So um, with spirit photography, you've, I've, I'm sure many of you have seen this photograph of the brown lady. You know, when you look in the old, um, you know, in old books and things, people did capture images like this and we can actually still capture images like this today. So a lot of people have reported seeing spirits and ghosts since the beginning of time. And, of course, being a medium, everybody wants proof. Um, so they would like, you know, people want to see their loved ones. And, we, you know, with all the different technology that we've had over the years, there has been different types of um, images that have been captured. I think the thing that's more tangible for people is if it's on a negative. And this is one of the issues we're having today is because we're having digital. So people are sort of saying, oh, you know, it could be a dust or it could be just an anomaly and I've got some examples of anomalies and things later on um, in the presentation but um, you know there are images like this around and a lot of our cameras now even our surveillance cameras are picking up orbs and our phones of course so with the the history of spirit photography a lot of people um, especially around the early 1900s or late 1800s early 1900s is when people started to take photographs. So they used, you know, used to try and get the spirit photos. I do think some of them were real, but I do think, think um, when there was the expectation on the photographer to actually capture images, they would um, maybe uh, double expose a plate because it used to be an old glass plate back in that time. So William Mumler was one of the famous American photographers who, who did that. So this is just sort of an image about it being in Harper's Weekly, which was, you know, in the... I can't really, I think it's about the 1800s, sorry, it sort of blurred when I put that in there. But um, they also, um, a lady named Ada Dean did some photography as well and that's how I sort of came, came to be interested in it. Um, so the thing is too, is it real or fake? So a lot of, there's a lot of images of mediums and I know when I first started doing mediumship, people would um, come to me, one lady especially in the room that I'm in here, I used to work from home before, and she was very disappointed the room wasn't black and I didn't have a box to go and get in um, so I could do a reading for her because she said I was supposed to have um, ectoplasm coming out of my mouth so that I could prove to her I was a trance medium. And I just sort of said to her, I, I didn't really know much about that back then, but as you can see, there's a picture of a lady there who's got the ectoplasm coming out of her mouth. And then there's a, a picture of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle because he, he was quite into the spirit photography so there are quite a lot of different versions of his um, of him with you know spirit or real or fake spirits around him in images. There were some images that looked like cotton wool and people who were um, famous, you know, in the newspapers at the time. There might be cricketers that might appear. So some of the photographers I think did sort of have a bit of creative license. I do think that they did capture the images, but it is very difficult. You can't really say you're going to capture an image every day. Like I've, I've taken thousands of photographs on film and out of every 36 shot, I might have got six if I was lucky. And then I'd have to wait and go to the, um, you know, to the photo lab to actually get it developed. And then I would stand there waiting to look at my pictures and then the image was just off screen. It was like, oh, gosh, if you look tiny orb in the corner, then it would move. So it's, it's been, it's, it's quite interesting with the way these spirit photos will come through too. So as you can see here, we've got, you know, the, the ectoplasm above the head, but then we have orbs. Then we have like rods that come through. Um, oh, there's all different types. Um, 
And sometimes an orb will actually manifest and then turn into the ectoplasm or into a full-bodied being, which I'll show you um, later. So Ada Dean is the lady here. So this is Ada here. So she was very well known for her spirit photography. Um, I went to an exhibition that was in Paddington and it was in uh, around 2000 and um, I was at the Sydney Centre of Photography in Paddington and I, um, I saw some of the images there and, and then um, I ended up getting my very first digital camera, which is a Sony Cybershot. It was only 2.1 megapixel. And I went to see the exhibition. I asked permission to take photographs in there, but you weren't allowed to. So I snuck my camera in. And this is when I, um, when throughout the Conan Doyle, there was a whole lot of images of spirit photos on the wall there. I was trying to recapture some of the images like, like they did. I mean, even these, some of these do look a bit like they're, they've got the Muslim sort of draped over the top. But I mean, I'll leave it to everybody's imagination and what they wish to choose and what they want to believe. Um, I think the important thing about all of these early photographers are that they open the conversation up and they've inspired many of us to actually undertake these journeys and to see if we can get spirits of the dead. I mean, if we can see them with our eyes, why can't we capture them with our, with our, you know, with our cameras or even with now the technology's changed, why can't we capture them with our phones? So here's, so this is sort of, there's that picture again. Um, so I was really excited when I actually got to um, take these photographs it was um, it was hard though because the the camera was only it was only a very small little camera at the time and just trying to sneak it in was the hardest problem. But um, it was for me it was exciting to be able to do digital photos because my husband was sick of me taking photographs of abandoned toilets in old um, derelict locations. I used to go out to Parramatta uh, Female Orphan School quite regularly and. I'd come back and he'd say, why can't you take photographs of the kids? Why are you taking photographs of these, you know, these strange things? And at least once, once I finally got the camera, and at the time, I think the camera was about $1,500 when I got the first one and a friend got it for me in America. So it would save me a little bit of money, but um, I was very excited. I took the camera everywhere. But the poor kids missed out sometimes. I would I'd just take more photos of the spirits. My daughter used to play with fairies. And it's one thing I, I couldn't find that image um, and she she used to um, tell me the fairies were around her all of the time. And um, I did find some photographs where she was sitting and she had like a big blue swish on her. And she used to always tell me I had fairies on me. And then when I'd look, I'd sort of go, where is it? And she'd say to me that I'd squashed it. So I was quite worried that I had upset the fairies. Um, I'm sure many of you have seen... Um, uh, there's a there's a movie about Conan Doyle. It's called A Fairy Tale, a real a true story. I think it was about the fairies in Cottingley Glen in England, and that was one of the inspirations for me to sort of take this fairy kind of photographs. These are this is how the images. So the first image you saw on the page previous. So this is this image here is the last of the series before the security guard came in and really went mad at me. Um, but this is how the images started. So this top one here. So it was talking about camera evidence for Conan Doyle. Then this next image here was just more photographs that Ada Dean took. And then for no apparent reason, I felt the energy shift in the room. This image started to come up. So now it's flashing. Yeah, so this image here um, on the left-hand side, it started to form then this is the image blown up and um, that's why I put this side profile of Conan Doyle because when you look at it, it's kind of repetitive in a number of images here. Even this one here almost looks like him sitting um, more like he, of, his, of his head and his shoulders, but I'll leave that to you up, up to your imagination. You might think I'm just being a little bit too excited. Um, but I, I have never ever captured anything like that again. And then when I went to go back to the exhibition, oh, I, yeah, I, I wasn't allowed to. I wasn't allowed to go. So anyway, I missed out on getting any more shots. Now, there was a TV show that was called Scream Test, and that happened in the early two thousands. And it was a TV show that um, they picked thirty people from Australia, and they took us to. Um, well, they said Australia's most wanted locations. It was actually um, all shot in New South Wales. So there were six locations and um, they got it down to they had five people 
that they went to the six locations and um, we had to last the night. So it was the first time I'd actually really done anything with spirit photography. So we um, we were given a, a digital, no, it was a, it was a film camera, sorry. We had a film camera. Um, we had a video camera. We had an EMF tester and we had a temperature gauge and they would take us to the, the locations. My locations were um, Maitland Jail, which is um, one of Australia's most violent um, jails, which is now closed. But we, we were taken into, into the jail with a bag on our head and we weren't told where we were going and then we were sort of just dumped inside the jail and then they took us all um, all five of us would be taken to a different location throughout the night. So we didn't have watches or anything on us or phones and they would take us to locate, like a room and lock you in there and then you would be shown a video of all the most dreadful things that happened in the room. Then the lights would be turned off and you'd just be left to your own devices in the dark and then they would actually um, play oh sounds God. and try and scare the hell out of you, which they really did. And... Um, from that point onwards, I was seeing a lot of things. I think my fear was showing me a lot. We were only, we had a video camera as well. We were only allowed to turn the video camera on if we were filming and because I was so terrified, I just left the camera on and talked to the camera the whole time because that was the only way I had light in the room. And I was absolutely terrified and, you know, we went through different locations in the jail, but each time I went somewhere, I was seeing things. When the TV show came on, on air, because I didn't see it until everybody else did, they said they didn't get any paranormal activity. And it was like there was stuff going on everywhere. There was brooms being thrown around. There was doors opening and shutting before me. And um, I, I actually got physically attacked um, when I was in there. And I'll show you the images of that in a, in a moment. But um, these balls of lights and um, energies that I was seeing during this TV show brought me back to when I was a child because that's exactly what I saw when I was little. I used to have things flying around in my room. And I used to get my mum and dad to come in and they just said I was, had an overactive imagination or that I wanted attention. And it was like, no, there were things in my room. So when I actually started to see these um, spirits during this show, it actually made me feel a lot more settled and it made me realise that my imagination was, it wasn't my imagination, I was actually seeing spirit. And so that set me on the quest to start photographing um, ghosts or anything or anything I could get to get proof. So this is what happened to me in the jail. That's 18 months after I had visited the jail. So I went back with a friend named Darren James and we went back to capture um, to see what we could get. It took a lot of courage. Um, Darren was actually in the show as well. Um, he, he didn't make it through. I was one of, there was only five of us that made it through. But together, Darren and I like, uh, visited all of the locations from the TV show. But as you can see, those marks on my neck weren't very nice. I got lifted by the throat by one of, uh, by a couple of ghosts and strangled. And that, that's 18 months later. And every time I did a reading, that would come back up on my neck. After I visited the jail, though, and whatever entity I brought home with me, it left me, thank goodness. So those marks disappeared. But it was quite frightening and it was also made me really... Um, angry and I wanted to, you know, try and work out what was going on. Of course, the producers didn't want to know anything about it because once the show was done, they didn't care. Um, so this is, these are some of the um, images that I, that I captured at, at Maitland Jail. So this is um, a spirit leaving the cell. Um, and some of these, this particular one is in the daytime. So you can photograph spirit day or night. These were taken on my husband's Canon EOS film SLR camera. And I always use a flash because when you're working with spirit, I've found that they tend to reflect off the flash. So this is an energy leaving a cell. Uh, this, was, this was a female cell. Um, I think it was Ward's uh, D block, this one was. And the, the, this is the doorway to the jail just to the right here there was a cell where um, I had to do some tests for the show and I actually got attacked by one of the ghosts in there and she scratched all down my face as well. So it was a, quite a violent area. There was this, this cell, there's this particular block, there's um, an area to the left where they don't even open the cell because a man um, puts spontaneously combusted in the cell. So it's got quite yucky energy in that area. This is another one of spirit um, just leaving. 
Um, so you can see they, they come up in different ways and there's a bit of ectoplasm um, coming up. This is in the exercise yard. And when I took photographs on the guard wall, um, I got this. I don't know why that keeps glitching. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I got this um, the sort of energy of, of a person standing there watching us. It's funny too when I um, take the photos, sometimes I don't see anything with my eyes. I feel it or I might, I, might, I might see something in my peripheral vision and I'm sure many of you have had these experiences where spirit will just sort of be on the side of your peripheral vision. When you look, it's gone. But it's, it's amazing what the cameras can capture. I have caught a lot on video. Um, I, I just didn't, didn't have enough room to put it all in here because I think we'd be going for a couple of hours otherwise and you might get sick of me. Um, now, these energies are energies um, that I've captured on my phone and these are at a place in Sydney called The Gap. So the gaps is a very depressing place in Sydney. A lot of people go there to suicide. So there's been hundreds of people over the years that have suicided. There was also a um, a, um, a ship that was wrecked around the corner from the gap and a lot of people died there. So it has got strange energy there. As you can see, you can capture different colours with the energies. Um, on my website, if you go into the gap, I've made little gifts of them so you'll see that they can move. But the, um, yeah, the energies, like this particular one, one minute there's nothing and then it almost looks like a person falling, which is it was quite sad going there. I used to work on, some, um, on a tour called the Haunted Sydney Tours with a, um, with a man named Alan Levison and he had a hearse called Elvira and we used to go to these locations and take photographs. And so that's how I came to go there. But this particular one here to the to the right, it actually it just came from from the ground and went straight up and disappeared. This was interesting because it's got like a little this green one. It's got like a little vortex coming through it, but they can move very quickly. Um, they can be more like a streak, but they can actually be full bodied orbs. But I have taken the photographs on SLR film, Polaroid, digital video, and the smartphones, and it. It doesn't really matter what the phone is so long as it's got a flash on it. My, my dog, Sonny, was the one who helped us discover about filming Spirit. I couldn't find the videos because it was in about five computers away. But um, when I first got the, the iPhone 4S, it had a video, so it had a light on it. And he was running around the house and it was a rainy day, so it was a bit dark in the lounge room and he was running around and looking like he was eating something. And my daughter decided to film him and so the camera turned on automatically with the, with the light and he had orbs coming in and out of his mouth and he was running around chasing them and he watches tv and he, he'll show us when the orbs are coming out of the television now these are some of the cameras that i have used when i started looking at it i thought oh my god i've spent so much money on cameras my kids call me gadget girl because i've had so many and i've and i have new cameras i've got more cameras that aren't even in here but um yeah, so this is the, the very early EOS that was my husband's camera that I started using. And the flash I would use was just the built-in flash. But I did get a lot of images on that, but it was much more expensive because you had to get the film. Um, Polaroid, I've had a couple of um, Polaroids. Now film is coming back into fashion. We can get the Polaroid film again now, but at, at one point it was like $60, $70 for a cartridge and you would only get... 24 shots in the Polaroids. Um, I bought a couple in secondhand shops and then they would die on me. And then one of my kids got one of them and he used the whole, because I had to get them imported, he used the whole um, car cartridge up, mucking around around the house. And I was like, no, it was so expensive. But you know, they've, now they're back in a lot and you can capture, you know, you can get the film. But at the time it was almost impossible to get that. But Polaroid does give images. I don't have the images to show you from that. A friend of mine who I used to photograph with, he's, um, he has them. This is my very first, you know, digital, the Sony Cybershot 2.1. That was the one that captured the images uh, with Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. The, the trouble is with the, these take great images, but this, the pixels are so small that to blow them up, it's very difficult. So you end up with these really pixelated things. There is um, some um, AI software that you can capture now. Topaz Labs has it, and you can run some of your early digital images through that so it can kind of improve your pixelation 
you know, and it'll kind of clean it up a bit for you. So that's that's an idea. So they've got Denoise on there. They've got a few different versions of the types of software that you can use, which I've been running some of my images through to restore them. This Canon Coolpix was my daughter's camera. Great little camera. It takes really good shots of orbs, and the orbs on this camera are 3D. So they look like little like little baubles, almost like Christmas baubles when you take those, which um, it was really good. I found it probably better to be better than the Sony Cybershot um, 2.1. This one here, the Sony Cybershot, which is a 5 um, megapixel, it was, it was really good as well. And it's got the uh, zoom lens on it and it's got a little pop-up flash. Again, it's only 5 megapixel, so it was becoming a bit limited with the size of the the pixels, but it would take some amazing shots. Um, this little one here is a Kodak Easy Share, which was one of my daughter's early cameras because she has the fascination. She's really good. She, was, she used to capture a lot of great images with it. But, yeah, this one was really good. The only problem is with this one, it goes off a, um, a normal um, AA battery. So if the ghosts hit it, it would go dead. So that would be a problem. And the pixels were only small though. I think they were only, I think they're about five, I think three or five megapixels, but it did take some great images. This is my favourite. You can still get them now. I just recently bought a, another secondhand one. So a Panasonic Lumix, depending on what country you're in or what version, the, it can be a TZ10. It's also got another name, but if you put TZ10 in, you'll get it. It's my favourite. It takes It's, it's small. Um, you could put night shot on it. It's, so it's got a, quite a lot of different settings. The screen's really good on the back. Takes some of the best photos that I've ever taken. So I would recommend if you want to do something and you want to use a, a digital, that, and you can buy them on eBay. I think I paid about $120 for one recently. And they, you know, they used to be a fair bit more than that. But that, that's a really good camera. I've got some really good photos, which I'll show you some um, a bit further in the presentation. This is the iPhone 4S, which is the first one that came out with a flash on it because initially um, the iPhones didn't have a flash. Uh, you could take it with the earlier iPhones. It's just sometimes I find that they reflect, reflect off the flash. And then this is the iPhone uh, 10X Max, and it's good. I've now got the 12, and the images aren't as good on the 12 as what they were on the 10. But I have people that have used um, Samsung because I'm more a Mac person, um, but I've got friends who have had um, Samsungs and they have captured phenomenal images on, on the Samsung phones. That being said, though, people have told me Google Pix and some of the other Android um, uh, cameras or, or Android phones are capturing really good images as well. Now, there's different types of spirits. So these are orbs. So orbs can be a, um, a full moon. They can move around. I, I find that... I think orbs, well, I have my experience is that the orbs have a consciousness. I've been able to speak with someone. I'll show you a little video that I've done with some of the images a little bit further along. So orbs can change colour. Um, Mary Rodwell is a dear friend of mine and she does a lot with ET and she finds that the blue ones are more ET spirit, but I've captured red ones and um, yellow ones. And as you can see in this image, they change in colour. So it's going green, but it's... Um, this is at William Charles Wentworth's mausoleum, and I'll show you. I've got an actual full face of him that I took on my phone. But this is all in the same, these two are in the same area. Uh, they, were, they were taken with the phone. Uh, these are digital. These were with, um, I think they're with my Lumix. So this is at Gladesville Mental Hospital. Unfortunately, I've lost... The image, this is the old cafeteria. I searched high and low yesterday and I couldn't find an image of it because when I went there, I was walking past. I have a friend named uh, Rob Tilly who's actually a parapsychologist and we were, we used to go to uh, Gladesville Mental Hospital every Thursday. We would vary the time and we would have a walk around to see what energies we would pick up. And this particular area is the old cafeteria. I, I'm actually not inside it. I'm actually outside it. There was a little square window that had a broken window pane and um, I could hear people calling me and I went up to the, the, the broken window and I could hear someone wanting me to sort of take photos. So I stuck my hand through and this is what I captured. 
So you can, as you can see, the orbs are moving around and interacting. So they're making different shapes. Now, the one thing I don't know personally is how many orbs make a spirit or it, does it manifest? Because as you can see, this is quite a big orb. It's in the same room there, and then this is a lot smaller. Um, I have had um, it, uh, times when I've taken photographs and there's a couple of orbs, then there's nothing, and then the next second there's a few orbs and then it turns into ectoplasm. So I'm not sure. I'm not a specialist on how that works, but I know they do communicate with me and I can ask them to do things or ask them to appear and then they will. And here they were having a lot of fun flying around all over the room and really trying to get my attention. But these were all taken during daytime and they were taken with me outside of the room with my hand through a broken window. Now, these are just some, some more orbs. And, and the thing is, what is an orb? You know, it's quite controversial. Um, people sort of say uh, orbs, you know, that can they be dust, can they be moisture or can they be raindrops? They can also be all of those. Lens flares can also be mistaken for orbs, which further adds to the controversy. So it's very hard. Sometimes it's a matter of the location you're in. If you're in a haunted location, you're probably more likely to capture something. But I've, I personally feel they're real. But, yes, I have taken photographs where, say, somebody's smoking near you, then smoke will look like it's ectoplasm. So you need to be really, you know, mindful of what you're putting up because everybody's going to have a go at you. So there's... It's, it's sort of, it's a hard one. And there's, there's going to be believers and non-believers no matter what you do. Like this particular one here, this, this top one, this is taken in the Capitol Theatre in Sydney. And I, I got quite a lot of different images in there on that particular day. In some minutes I'd get masses of orbs and then the, the, the green is actually the lights on the exit signs, but then the, the spirits have actually utilised those and, and sort of pulled them out into the image as well. This one here is in my um, lounge room. So there's an orb just moving around and I have lots of stuff happen in my house. This one, again, this is at um, William Charles Wentworth's mausoleum, which is at the back of um, Elizabeth House in the city. So that he's known to sit on these rocks. He's actually, he that was his wish. He died overseas in England and, he was the, and they brought his body back and that's he's got his own little... Um, mausoleum which is that's the back of it there but he he's quite an active person so if anybody's in sydney and you want to take photographs just quietly go up there and um you know and you don't even have to, like the this the images i've got i don't go inside the mausoleum there's a big um sort of wrought iron lace gate you can just put your hand through and you get images there but you know that it's interesting how they just sort of They'll just appear. And I found I've been in a line of people all taking photos. Picton is very, very haunted as well. And I'll be taking a photo and I'll get all the spirits and then the person next to me won't get anything, but then mine will stop and then that'll go into their camera. So spirit wants you to, they'll sort of let you know whether they want you to capture their image or not. So these, um, these are all taken at Picton. So, you know, some people, is it, is it ghost fog or is it spirit mist or is it ectoplasm? Uh, so um, see this one here, well, the, well, this this one on the bottom here, this was first. So see there's a few little orbs. Then it's starting to form into the spirit mist or ectoplasm. But then even me saying ectoplasm, it can be debatable because sometimes people pe people think ectoplasm has to come out of a medium's mouth. So it, it's so it's up to you what you want to call it or I would call it ghost fog or spirit mist. But it went from this bottom photo to this person here. But after I got this image, my camera went dead flat, so I'd zap, completely zapped my camera. And these, these ones, these two bottom ones, were taken on my Sony CyberShop 2.1 megapixel. And it, um, I actually had to, I did run it through the AI um, software just to get it so it wasn't so pixelated because otherwise you wouldn't have been able to see the image. Now above here, this is again at Picton, but this, this was this top one on the top right and the bottom were both taken on the same evening. And there was a lot of orbs, there was a lot of activity. And um, yeah, it's so, so the photos prior to that, there were orbs and then it suddenly just started to appear. This one here is in a, the, it's called the Mushroom Tunnel or the Red Bank Range Tunnel, which is at Picton as well. It is extremely haunted. You can get, this photo was taken in the daytime. So, you can, so day or night, you can get these images. We went there with a the camera crew uh, for today, tonight, 
and I got a lot of a lot of these strange images. It's funny, there, there used to be a train tunnel and it was also a mushroom tunnel, but a lady named Emily was killed in this tunnel and there's also a hooded man that appears. So there's a lot of um, activity in this in this area. I've gone in there with um, taking people on ghost tours and I thought that I had people beside me touching me and I turned the, the torch on and I was in there by myself. Um, the, well, the rest of the group was way behind me, but this, this particular area is very, very well known for the hauntings and that it has energy, slightly this energy here. It actually flies across the roof of the tunnel and it'll fly above you and then go back. When we were standing there in this day, on this day when I took this picture, you could feel the train coming, but the train, there's no train track then. It hasn't been there for many, many years. But my hair was blowing back like the train was coming straight at me and there was, Emily was killed in the tunnel by the train. So I wonder if that was the energy from her spirit that would be there. But with the, um, when we look at all of these images, so they, they change. So orbs can come in different shapes, different sizes, and then it can also manifest into spirit mist. So, it, and, they, and it's interesting because it can really, it can be there in one second and then the next shot it's gone. So they do disappear quite quickly. But many of the early spiritualist mediums, they were known to exude the, the, the ghost fog or ectoplasms out of the mouth. I'm so happy that I don't do that. I don't know that that's something I would like to do, but I um. I know when we went down to um, Port Arthur um, a few years ago on a tour, we, there was a lot of things going on when we were in um, near the, um, the one-out cells and um, there was, we couldn't capture it, we could see it and it was really frustrating. I had a jacket on like this and there was ectoplasm coming out of my arm then coming all around me and everybody could see it. But as soon as we take the photo, it would just zip off the screen. So we, there was a lot of activity. And I think the frustrating thing with this is it's trying to capture them because they're so fast. But anyway, with your own experience, you'll know. The one thing that I do find with this is that when, it, when I feel them around, the temperature changes. And it, so it can become very, very cold. I'm actually freezing at the moment. It's not that cold in here, but I feel it's just spirit being around me. But I also smell a damp, earthy smell similar to what you'd smell if you go into the house, like dirt smell. So pay attention to what you get. At the female orphan school, when we would get activity, we used to smell um, like rose perfume. And there was a lady that was known to haunt there that would smell of in that perfume. So, And it was an abandoned building. It's now been restored. It's part of Western Sydney University. But there was no roses in the room and we're on the second floor. But there are different smells that can come with it. And that's it's one of our other psychic clairs. So maybe um, it's called uh, clear salience where we can actually smell spirit. So pay attention to that when you are trying to take photos. Now this is, oh, I don't think it's going to play. Oh, my goodness, it's not. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip my screen over to my original one just to show you. So this is, I wanted you to meet Mary. So Mary, um, we met Mary in 2005 and it's when we used to visit the Glasgow Mental Hospital every Thursday and we walk around the grounds and try to pick up the energies, like I said earlier. Um, and when we, Mary, to me, appeared as a lady in a black dress with a white apron or a pinny over the top and she had like a hairnet over her hair and that's when I took the photo. But I'm going to just swap into my original PowerPoint. Oh, no, gosh, sorry. I'm just going to try and get it. I had it on the screen there because, oh, yeah, there it is. I want to show you, um, we did a little gif of Mary. All right. So this is, I don't know if you can see how the energy there, there's a little energy that sort of looks like a, almost looks like a slinky. Can you see that little image? That's That was Mary. So she appeared in 12 shots and then just disappeared I don't know if I can, I'll make this bigger for you. There we go. Maybe I'll just start with this one. It's just you're going to see all the lines on my screen, um, that's all. But see how it's, um, you can see there that Mary's just there and she was just, she would disappear. Then we, over the next week we went back and went back and then this is what I, what I got here with, so see the, all of the orbs. I was asking the orbs to come close to me and asking them would they, um, would they come near my hand. So that where that seat is my hand, you can see here, see those little tiny windows on the back? That One of those was broken and I put my hand through that. 
But over 45 shots, um, the orbs were interacting and I'd just say, come closer, come closer, where are you? Then they'd disappear and then they'd be back. So I just thought I'd show you how they could come up and they were consciously being very well aware of what I, um, what I was saying. Now I'll just go back to my other screen now. Um, I don't know. I keep getting this thing on here. I don't know why. Anyway, so that's, that's the other part we've done. Um, with Mary Beth, I just thought it might be something to show you how they can actually interact with you. Now, the other thing is with apparitions and ghosts. So this is my picture of William Wentworth. So when we with those other photographs I showed you near the mausoleum with the orbs, I um I was sort of walking away and all the group was sort of looking into the mausoleum, and then I felt someone right in front of me. I took a photo and then I saw. I, I saw what I thought was a man closing his eyes and I went, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't know you were there. I didn't mean to flash blind you. And he didn't say anything. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I looked and there was no one there. I thought I must be seeing things. Anyway, we got back on the bus, went home. When I got home, I looked on my phone and this is what I captured. So this is, this is a painting of him and this is what I captured on my, um, on my phone. So that was on the iPhone 10 Max Pro. And I have... Um, I have seen pictures of him. He, it was funny, you feel him around you when you go there. I think he likes the attention when we go to visit, but sometimes if it's too noisy, he gets a bit cranky. We did have two men on the tour, but none of them had a suit on and none of them had a, they were all quite skinny men. We had a, our driver was Asian, so definitely doesn't look Asian. And um, we had another man who had a blue coat on, but no, there's definitely, um, William was coming to sort of show us that he was around it's uh, it's interesting. We've, we've every time we go there, we have activities. So if anyone's in Sydney, Australia, maybe um, go and go to the mausoleum and see what you can see. Now these are some other um, spirit images that I have. So this this one here, it's like a burning cross, and this was taken at Gore Hill Cemetery. In all the other photos, there was nothing much in it. There's no lights in the area that would have been setting off these squiggles. And the, and the cross certainly wasn't on fire when I took the image, but that's what that's what was captured. Again, 2.1 megapixel. These two here with the streaks. Just wanted to show you different ways spirit can show up. Um, these are taken at Hyde Park Barracks in, in Sydney in the city. And when I was in, and it was taken with an SLR camera, so the old Canon SLR. So when I went in there, I could I could see a man near this light and he was being very cheeky and he was pointing to me and he was telling me to take a photo, take a photo, because on the back of that door is the big clock that's at the front of the Hyde Park barracks. And when I took the photograph, I got these arrows with the arrow heads. And then when I went out into the courtyard, I got the same sort of thing and this was when we were leaving. So, again, different types of energies and, you know, with spirit. Um, now... These are interesting ones. So this is my house. You know, I was talking about the electrical items. Well, you probably won't want to come and stay at my place because, you know, but mind you, I don't have these TVs anymore. I have different TVs because uh, they've mucked them up. But they, whether the TV's on or off doesn't seem to matter with the spirits. So this is my our old TV. We have it upstairs now, but I don't dare take photographs up there because it's near my bedroom as well. But um, the, the, uh, the TV's off, but on the front it had a little blue light to say there was power going through it. So, it, look, they've had a bit of fun there and then there's all little orbs all around it. Um, this is when there was a lot of activity. The dog was starting to go a bit crazy and sort of letting me know something was going on. So this is spirit energy coming out of my television. And as you can see, everything else is in focus, but then that's not. And then this is an image. So there's a blanket sitting on the land. The TV would be in the background there. Um, but it's actually come out of the television and across the lounge but you can't even see the TV screen and everything's in focus. These, these photos, all taken on the Panasonic Lumix. So it picks up things. Now, this is one of many. I have quite a lot. If you have a look on my website, you will see there is a lot more images like this with the television. So this is in my bedroom. So sometimes I would feel I had activity in the bedroom. Um, I'd be watching a show and I'd just feel like something had walked in. And as you can see... It actually is taking it frame by frame, but the whole room is in focus. There's a little bit of spirit activity around the top here. 
But as you see, look, you can see the lady's face is changing. So she's, and you can see um, when, you, when you look at it, you can just sort of see that it's, it's pulling out frame by frame of the, um, of the television. And I've got a lot of them. Sometimes it'll, you'll see in the image, it'll be on one side and then it'll disappear, then it'll come across the other side of the bed. So I have a lot of that type of activity in my house. Um, when it gets that bad, I always clear it, don't worry. I don't sort of like to have a house full of ghosts. Um, but mind you, they uh, do have fun. They turn our new television on. My son came down yesterday and said, oh, I was, um, did Dad leave the TV on? And it was in the kids' channel again, but it was on full bore. So he had to, now it was around 3 o'clock in the morning, so it turned itself on by itself. Or they might actually activate our, our garage remote and put the door up. So have a lot of fun with us. Now, these um, are ghostly figures um, that I've captured. They've, they're all in different cameras. This one's 2.1. No, sorry, this is SLR. This is taken at a house called Burnside Homes. And there's a, a, a hooded person that was up in the tower. My mum used to work there when I was a child. She used to be uh, a cleaner there. And when I was little, I used to sit in the car with my dad and we'd wait to pick mum up and I'd hate looking up at the tower. I always felt someone was looking at me. And then many years later, I and this is at Parramatta, so it was a Burnside Homes was a series of homes that were donated for war children. So they weren't necessarily orphans, but they were for disadvantaged people. But this is, was one of the main homes there. But when I took a photograph, I felt someone looking down at me. We'd already been inside the building. And we're about to leave, and that's what we what came up on my on my photo. So that's a film image. This one here is a little bit harder to see. This was taken on my phone, the ten um, iPhone XX Max, and just there you can see um, as we were walking up, the guide. So this is a Port Arthur. The guide was saying that the guard would stand there, and, and because the um, overseer's house was further down the road there, and so just that, it's quite light though. I'll, um, can I try and blow it up? I don't know if I can blow it up. Um, let me see. I'll see if I can blow it up for you. There. So there's that image there. Um, and so when, I, when we got a bit closer, I said to the lady, I've got this photo of the guard, and she said that's where he would have stood. So that was his sort of spot just to allow people to pass um, oh, hang on, I better put this up. And this one here on the stage, this this one here, it's only quite light. This is at the Capitol Theatre. So when I was in there, we were allowed, we sort of, they put the curtains up, they put them down, and then this person started to appear on the stage. And it, they came up in quite a few images. They are quite light because uh, it was at a distance. But, yeah, there was someone that was there and there, there was other images and they've sort of turned sort of front to side on. And that was with... Um, the, the Panasonic Lumix. This one here, it, this was a surprise. So this is at Glastonbury Abbey in Glastonbury in England and there's this here. It was a very rainy day and this was taken on my Canon EOS 80D, which is very rare because you don't really capture many images on, on those. But I felt someone looking at me and then there's that sort of um, that energy of like someone standing there. Admittedly, it's see-through, but, you know, a, a lot of the spirit photos do look like that. Um, now, these are lens flare, and I I have people, and, and this is this is rain. It was the best. It oh, hasn't rained all weekend. I thought, I'll get some rain photos for you. It's been raining for months here, but do you think it would rain on the weekend when I wanted to get an image? Of course not. But um, these are lens flare, and it's a difficult when you tell people that because they're very pretty, and... People, you know, everybody goes, oh, it's a ghost, it's a ghost, and we all want it to be a ghost, and sometimes it's more, it's a spiritual feeling. If it feels like something special to you, it is, but technically, technically, these are lens flare, lens flare, lens flare, lens flare, lens flare. Um, this one is taken on an SLR camera. So when you when you get lens flare in an SLR, because of the way the mechanism is in the, in the, um, the camera, you, you get it because of the aperture. So that's why you get that square image, or not square, but squared off edges. Um, this one, this is at Uluru. I was very lucky to be at Uluru when it rained. It absolutely bucketed down. But this is 
This is a rain orb. So see how it's got a tail and it's going up? And you wouldn't think when rain's coming down, you wouldn't think it would have a tail on the back of it because it actually looks like it's shooting upwards. But that's a rain orb. I know it's very small, but it's the best I could do. Um, these are lens flare. That's a lens flare from, that's the sun and that's the lens flare um, coming off the water. These, these ones here, um, these are at the back of Uluru, and this is very spiritual here. There are some Indigenous um, artworks here, and I did feel spirit there, and I have some videos that are on my website showing of some of the images that I captured, but it is technically a lens flare, but it does look like an orb. So it's just to sort of give you a little bit of a um, bit of information just to see them. Like if you went and jumped up and down on your bed and you took photos, you would have a room full of orbs, and you'd be very excited, but... They would, be, they would be dust orbs, unfortunately. Um, I think it's sometimes more when we get the spasmodic ones that come through with, you know, that sort of just shoot through. And you like the ones from, that I showed you from um, Gladesville, they, they will sort of show you more there, you know, because they've actually got a tail and they're moving around. Um, these are some other ones that I captured. So the, this is this top one's 2.1 megapixel and this one is a film one. So this is the bottom one is taken from the female orphan school at Parramatta and the top one is at the cemetery and you can see that it goes into like a vortex. But um, I'm sure you're going to have fun with doing your own experiments with your cameras and your phones. I think it's more a matter of just playing around. It's trial and error. Look, when I started, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just seeing what I could see and it's been a fun journey. Mind you, it's been um, probably my husband too. It's an expensive journey with the amount of cameras that I've bought. But now we have a phone with it's you know it's built in anyway, so just be mindful of um, when when you want to take photos. Sometimes I I think it's nice to ask spirit if you're at a hill at a location or a cemetery to ask them if they'd like you to take their photograph. Um, you don't want to bring home any entities or energies with you that might be a bit unhappy. But I think you know it's just having fun, and the more of us that capture these images, the better because it's proof, and that's what we need. You know my favourite book. I'm just going to stop sharing my... Okay, so my favourite book is The Orb Project, which goes right into, you know, the scientific ways with orbs. And some orbs will come up with faces in them. And I do have some. And do you think I could find them yesterday? But, you know, you'll see people's faces in them. You, there's lots of different things. You know, the, um, the skull experiments, they had amazing luck with um, capturing images on film that wasn't even exposed or out of the packet. So I think for all of you, just have fun and, and try taking photos. And um, if it's digital, the good thing, it's free. Or if it's on your phone, you don't have to get them developed.